live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's theCUBE. Covering Commvault Go 2018. Brought to you by Commvault. Welcome back to Nashville, Tennessee. This is Commvault Go and you're watching theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is Keith Townsend and I'm thrilled to welcome to the program Al Bunty, who's the Chief Operating Officer at Commvault. Thanks so much for having us and uh, pleasure to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, hold on, uh, in your keynote this morning, uh, your, your CEO uh, did a little bit of the talking. Uh, you, you, we made the joke that you might be the teller to his pen <laughs> there. Um, so maybe Keith and I will talk for a little bit and then we'll let you get in. Fine. Is that all right? <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> all right, uh, so Al, we've really had a good day here. We've talked to some of your customers, uh, talked to partners, uh, talked to a lot of the people here. Um, the, the story that's coming across is Commvault's a company we know, but maybe don't know the Commvault of today. So, uh, what, what, what's some of the messages you want customers to kind of come away with from the show, and then we'll get in from it there. Yes, um, so we're focusing on trying to get the message across that we've simplified. We're in a complex world, as you guys well know. Um, you have to do it through automation, lots of it, orchestration, et cetera and we're trying to drive outcomes that are better for our IT customers out there. Almost that simple. Yeah, um, you use the word simple. Actually, I liked in the keynote, there was a, a, a little back and forth you had. You know, cloud was supposed to be simple and cheap, and when people actually got in and did it, they found out that really it was neither. Correct. <laughs> um, the word that was used in the keynote was, well, you want to be smart, and that might lead to things that are simpler and everything. Bring us inside a little bit, to, you know, why, why Com, how, what Commvault's doing that is smarter to lead to you know, easier, simpler down the road. And or better outcomes, yeah. right, I agree. So yeah, again, as you guys know, as new technologies and or infrastructures come out like cloud, their initial use cases were just a parking lot for data, right? So just write it up there and whatever works. Well, it turns out that's simple, but now if you really want to use that data and that, uh, those capabilities up in the cloud for cooler uh, use cases, now you should be doing it smarter. So we talked, guys, about automation again. We talked about how you even write that data initially, write it natively so there isn't a conversion back and forth. That's a lot of latency. Um, and then throughout everything we're talking about, we're adding a lot of machine learning, analytic capabilities, maybe overusing the word AI, but you know, leading down that path, and it makes a big difference, because these are big, complex operations. So let's talk about this simple and smarter lesson. We've obviously seen a lot of change come out of Commvault. I went to Commvault Go last year, difference between last year and this year, you guys have made strides, licensing model completely changed. As you talk to customers who are dealing with these complexities as a result of cloud, and they look at simplified licensing, what have been some of the lessons learned over the past 20 years that have made you guys comfortable making, which I have to say is a pretty bold decision in licensing. What has enabled that decision? It, it's a good question. Keith, I think, um, I think it gets at, that's what they want. <laughs> it's about that <laughs> simple. Seems simple enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we went off and talked to, not just enterprise customers, but mid-market customers. Remember, we're doing a lot of our activity through partners, so you have a third party. You don't want to get too confusing there. So, we pushed hard on that idea, both in quoting, selling, and deploying, and we just worked it a lot with our customer base and determined simplicity, by the way, is the number one criteria these days. It trumps cost, it trumps risk reduction, it trumps capabilities. People want, it's got to be simple, or I prefer simplified. Not simple dumb, simple smart. All right, so Al, Commvault has quite a few employees. You've yes. got quite a lot of customers. Yes. You've got some very well-funded you know, startups in this space. How does a Commvault 
compete? As a COO, how, how do you put the organizational structure in place and what, what, how do you enable the, the company to be able to compete against uh, you know, some of these well-funded new players? Yes, that's, that's always a challenge. Um, it really is. So, you know, I think first of all, you have to have philosophies like you have to change as a company. No resting on your laurels. You guys know in tech industry, you can't rest on your laurels, number one. Number two, we used to have to compete and change just a little faster than our competition. Now you have to change faster than startups. So everything we do, we're trying to drive change, we're trying to drive responsiveness. You know, we've moved to rapid dev models. Um, again, I know you guys are well versed on it. We want to be able to respond to the market back to pricing, licensing, messaging, extremely fast. Back to the way Bob and I started the business is we always, always, always believe you have to have the best technology. You can't go to sleep on that. You can't go on autopilot. And in our space, you have to have the best support. So don't try to finesse those things. You know, there may be other things to finesse, but just go all out and really drive the technology, the support, and then to where you guys are going, now get your act together on marketing, packaging, pricing, messaging, positioning, all those things. And that's where we're, we're really uh, bringing our game up. So on that competition front, you guys have a, I don't know if it's an advantage, disadvantage, you can tell me, against your competitors, you have up to 100,000 customers who have used this product or a variation of this product for 20 years. So disruption may not be the word that they're looking to hear. They, they may be, some of these customers may be wanting to hear steady, reliable solution that I've used over the years, served me well, while you're trying to appeal to a customer that we had on earlier that said, man, the idea that Commvault is going into SaaS and having these rapid deployment cycles is what I love about the company. Brand new customer to Com Commvault, how do you balance those two and is it advantage or disadvantage? It's a, it's a great question and, and it's tricky is the, <laughs> is the right answer. But I think you, you know, I've heard a lot of people Keith, say as well, wow, in your space, we don't necessarily want simple and limited. It's got to be reliable. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be, you know, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. All right. those same kind of things. Experienced people really like that level of experience. So the real simple answer is, sorry for overusing simple, is that you got to do both. You got to try and simplify and again, that's where I distinguish between simple and simplified. So put automation against it, make it, make it simple, save some minutes and steps in those IT guys' day and try to do both. We, we've actually used a tagline, I don't think I did today, on powerful simplicity. So you got to do both kind of idea, if that makes sense. Yeah, taking automation taking automation and using the, these automation techniques to make what are, was a complex job simple, bottle that up, abstract it, and allow customers to use services. So how are yep. your traditional customers reacting to the new combo? I think very well. Um, we've gotten a, really a lot of great feedback, new products through the summertime, through even back to the springtime. I happen to believe enterprises are coming around more to the idea that you have to consolidate your platform, the platform idea, you guys, to automate. You know, I'm running into customers, 50% of their activity is tied to compliance. Well, and that takes a ton of automation, and you don't want to be doing scripts and all that stuff every day, because it's repeatable. So again, take those kind of ideas, simplify the environment, or sorry, the operations, and yet still keep a ton of capabilities and features. Yeah, it, it's funny, if we dial the clock back two decades, things like intelligently managing our data and building in automation probably wouldn't have sounded that foreign. But I agree. today, 
I think it's a little bit different. You know, we talked about the, the last, you know, a decade ago, metadata was something I think most of us in the storage industry were like, this is critically important, but today it's actually happening. Why is today so important and you know, is it, we'd love to see, hear your viewpoint on that. Another great question. I don't know is the honest answer for sure, but I think it's all got to be driven with just the mountain of data. As you guys know, just tremendous data growth. I think point one. Um, point two is I think a lot of organizations are seeing that it's required to run their business. I mean, if you, if you saw Steve Connell this morning, he talked about data is a new water. You know, it's, it's like that. So more and more people are coming to that conclusion. You know, I can't go into a business meeting and say, guys, I think we ought to do this. And they go, well, what do you base that on? It's just an instinct. You know, that doesn't play anymore. So it's a mountain of data. It's using the data. And that's been tricky in this space. I always said in the backup arena, People just backed it up because they were supposed to. They didn't even, it didn't even occur to them that they might need to use it. So it's like a big dumping ground. But yep, check the box, we backed it up. So all those, so it's velocity, it's volume, those kind of things too, and Keith, I think is probably where it's going. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You know, we, we've been hearing for a number of years now, you know, data's going to drive everything. You must have data, you can't have opinions but we're still early to see data-driven businesses. Yeah, I so agree. Do you have some kind of early exemplars or you know, what do you expect to see over the next couple of years that will drive things even more? Well, we're, we're focused right now on the operations side of it, so we're using tons of these techniques. And I don't know if you saw my example today, but take a typical run, you have 48,000 events and logs. How the heck are you going to do that without advanced analytics and machine learning, and you saw my example, and this is all true stuff, um, it got it down to six issues that you needed to deal with. So again, we're focused on that side of the equation, but we have a ton of customers wanting to do, and you're hearing all the BI type of use cases out there, be it retail, be it security, be it the media industry, you know, how do I capture and save and understand what bits of uh, media clips I have? Today it's just in a big pile, right? So wouldn't it be nice if we could use it? So Al, you're an entrepreneur. You're, you're farm, farm boy background. Good work. You're a COO of a company going through tremendous transformation. As you talk to your peers, whether it's peers within other technology companies, uh, the farming community, et cetera, all these industries that are being disruptive. What advice have you given to them? Your, Convo Go is a great example of five years ago, you guys didn't have a show. You've had a show, you're transforming the company. What advice have you given to your peers or even received that, that you'd like to share? Well, I think it's, you can't kick the can down the road, really. You got to deal with it. Um, it's a tough question, Keith, but I think just deal with it and start investing. We go in so many places, and I'd have to be careful on how I say this, but in a lot of companies, the capabilities that they have within their companies of dealing with major architectural issues and data issues is, A, some of that talent has left, and B, they got other more short-term activities to, to, that are pressing them, right? So guys, just back up, take a broad view, take a long view, go get your foundations in place and do this data thing right. I guarantee you it's going to pay off for you. Or you're going to be really disappointed if you don't. So just embrace it. All right, well, Al, really appreciate catching up with you. Uh, you, you know, I, I think, summarize what you were saying there. Um, you can't just think about it, you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, for Keith you're Townsend, <laughs> I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, a couple more left here at Commvault Go in Nashville, Tennessee. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.